Welcome to Improv for the Podcast. On this week's episode, I'm joined by Sushant, who will tell us all about his improvisational journey. We'll play a couple games and most importantly, learn how he improved his life. Let's hit it. Welcome to Improv for the Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lee Evans. And today I'm joined by the amazingly talented programmer, man of many hidden skills, fashionable icon, <laughs> Sushant. Oh, give it up for Sushant, everybody. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. How you doing this evening? Uh, I'm doing great. Doing great. All right. All right. Now, we were talking before the show. This man... He's always dressed for the occasion. And I respect that. I am always not dressed for the occasion and I need help. So if you're looking for tips on how to look good, look this way. Don't look here. All Thank right. You. With that said, Sushant, we're here tonight because of um, this old place, IFTP. So if you could just fill us in a little bit, maybe how'd you get started here? Yeah. Uh, the pandemic ended. Mm. And I realized that there were a few people that I used to surround myself with mm. who were now uh, absent. Mm. So I wanted to find something new, something to, to employ my time in. And uh, I ended up here. And that was one of the best decisions I've made in a while. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And what year was that when you joined? You found this place last year. Last year, okay, 2022. Yeah, yeah, things were things were pretty clear at that point. I'd say, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know that COVID will ever really be gone, but it's better than it was. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. The COVID shots are still rough, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. But I think we're through the thick of it. Yeah, through the shutdowns and things like that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm no doctor. I'm no scientist. <laughs> Who knows? You know? Yeah. We'll never know. Yeah. Every year there's a chance for something, I think. Yikes. Well, Times we live in, right? Yeah. yeah the uncertainty. That's part of being human. You almost have to expect the unexpected mm. now. Otherwise, it's always a poor surprise. Yeah. Yeah. But if you expect it, you're like, oh, wow. I knew this would happen. Yeah. I'm prepared. Yeah. I knew there wouldn't be another crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's like how, how everyone got tired of people saying we're living in unprecedented times. And I mean, is it, aren't times always unprecedented? Like, right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's, I think, maybe a little silly to be like, things are pretty precedented right now. <laughs> it's, it's not going to last. You know, there's always going to be something unknown coming your way. Yeah. Whether good or bad. I mean, it gave me the opportunity to find something new and fulfilling. So. Mm. You know, bright yeah. side or silver yeah. lining, however yeah. you want to look at it. Yeah, 100%. I think, I mean, thinking about the pandemic in particular, right? I think for, you know, the people's experience with it differed greatly. You know, there were some people who had to deal with horrible tragedy and loss during that time. There were other people who really benefited from the time at home and kind of the growth that they had at like after that. So it's very interesting because it's like this was an objectively bad thing that happened but like good for some people personally, which is really yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 I think I saw both sides of that. So I'm like, Oh wow. Strange. It'll, I think in, you know, like 50 years time, we'll like look back at it and it'll be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be studied just like everything else is. Yeah. And there's a lot of aspects of it that I'm always thinking about, mm. you know, my neighbor lost her husband mm. and it's one of those things where I I didn't really spend much time with them. I didn't know them too well. I knew their names. Yeah. But and I used to see them around. I used to see them and you know, just in uh everyday my everyday life. Yeah, sure. But when he was gone, I somehow felt the lack of his presence. Mm. He never had much impact in my life, but mm. somehow he had more when he was gone. Mm. That really struck me as something that was somehow nebulous, but 
present that I'd never thought about. Just yeah. people that when they're gone, you suddenly uh, realize they're gone. Yeah. And even someone who like you maybe didn't know super well, but generally around probably close to every day or maybe yeah. you saw them and just like, oh, hey, you know, and then in passing and like you notice when that person isn't there anymore. Yeah. And I felt for my neighbor yeah. more than I'd ever considered her mm. at all. Now I consider her every day. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause you can't not think about it. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> That's tough. <laughs> Sorry. No, kind of no, a but it's a, <laughs> it's a good example though. <laughs> right. Of like that, uh, the, the polar opposite experiences I yeah. think that people had. Yeah. yeah. Cause like, I think I could say similar to myself in that, like I was very fortunate to like come through the pandemic pretty okay. But you know, I had friends or, you know, people close to me who had a lot tougher and more harsh experiences and it's just like wow how yeah. random it all was you know yeah just yeah. no rhyme or reason yeah. just things just happened and people were left to pick up the pieces yep. and move on here we are <laughs> <laughs> so anyway here, uh, here we are sad doing improv <laughs> yeah who cares about all that stuff? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Moving on. <laughs> all right, Sushant. Uh, so as always, it's tradition here on Improv for the Podcast. We got to play some three things, but it's personal to you. Perfect. So with that said, uh, here we go. All right. Uh, any questions? You've played three things before. I have played three yeah. things. Yeah. I'll give you some categories. You'll list three things. We'll move on to the next one. Great. Simple as that. Uh, here we go. These are three things. Types of cookies. Uh, chocolate chip. One. Oatmeal raisin. Two. Which I hate. Um, <gasps> and then shortbread. Three. Very nice, very nice. Second category, programming languages. C sharp. One. COBOL. Two. Pascal. Three. Ooh, very nice. Last category, things you love about San Diego. Ooh, uh, those, what are they, seals or sea lions? I don't know. One of those guys are always sunning themselves. Yeah. Those yeah. guys. One. Uh the surf, of course. Two. And a uh, Hodad's burger place oh, in Ocean yeah. Beach. Delicious burgers. You can't fit them in your mouth, but uh, that's kind of the fun of eating there. Yeah. Sometimes it's the spectacle. Three. These are three <laughs> things. <laughs> yes. I was like, wait, I have to close off the game. All right, we're going to circle back on that category. Um, why did I ask you about cookies? I don't know, just guess. Yeah. Uh, wait, say that again. Why did I ask you about cookies for oh. the first category? Uh, because an awesome thing happened to me this week. Mm. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody I know and a lot of us at IFTP know Becca. Um, sorry, Becca, name dropped. Yeah. Um, Is that Becca T? Uh, Becca Tornquist. I don't know if that's okay, the yeah. only she was, Becca She T. was on the show about a month ago. Yes, she yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, So she Friend of the podcast. Um, made cookies mm. for some of us and... Um, I don't know. That just filled my heart. Mm. It felt really good. Yeah. And I ate those bastards in one night. As you should. Yeah. Cookies are meant to be enjoyed. And you don't want them to sit for too long. Right. Yeah. I don't know if they go bad. I don't really understand it's, cookies. It's not worth the risk. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not worth the it risk. Was a, it was a great night. Mm. I didn't sleep very well because I ate a lot of sugar. <laughs> but, you know, worth it. Worth it. Worth it. Now, did you have a glass of milk with your cookies? or like I any? don't like milk. No. I just drank a glass growing up every yeah. day. Yeah, that was one of those things. Yeah, it was yeah. a ritualistic, horrible ritual that I, I was made to perform every day. And yeah. Oh, left that time behind. Yeah, I don't, I think like nowadays, many folks like they don't drink milk. I mean, milk by itself is not very good. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, yeah. yeah like growing any up though, milk, it, any milk, like oat milk, uh, almond milk whatever milk yeah cow milk whatever yeah. doesn't matter it's terrible i don't yeah. like it yeah so i like avoid even with cereal i'll be like i'll eat the cereal uh, yeah cereal's good dry sure to avoid the milk okay okay so Apple just anti-milk i mean yeah i like dairy don't get me wrong yeah. i like dairy sweets and things cookies cookies like, got yeah dairy right. right but i won't drink or like dip things in milk yeah yeah all right that's fair what about chocolate milk? Where do we stand? Nope. No. Nope. 
It's still milky. This is you might be our most controversial guest. <laughs> I've been told, yeah, I don't drink chocolate milk, hot chocolate, <laughs> cocoa. I just don't drink drinks actually, except this, water and alcohol. This must be a tough time of year for you then. Oh There's yeah, a lot of hot chocolate going. Oh out. yeah, you gotta keep an eye out. Okay, I started drinking tea just to shut people up. Mm. You're like, I gotta get something. Some like <laughs> mint tea. It has yeah. mint, and people associate mint with the holidays yeah that's true that's true and so i was like here is a drink i am drinking yeah 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 wow wow you know what i respect it though you're like it's not just one milk it's all the milk every not kind a fan. of milk no thanks yeah. okay i respect it take a stand against milk thank you yeah it's a lobby that i'm working towards good good day. you gotta watch out for big you know milk. that got milk campaign oh yeah 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 this this one is a much more aggressive mm. you know don't got milk, Kim. Don't got milk. <laughs> if there's one thing about Sushant that you need to know, he don't got milk. I am afraid that this is going to become my uh, mm. personality. This might rub a lot of people the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. I might have picketers or yeah, people this, with torches at good my luck. doorstep. After this releases, you you will be living in the public eye of scrutiny. <laughs> Yeah. Oof, I guess one yeah. way to get into tons of tons of milk drinkers are going to be <laughs> furious. Um, okay. Also, before we move on to the next category, not an oatmeal raisin guy, no? Uh, no, no, not. Like, why would you put that in something that's good? Why would you put, like, two terrible things? So oatmeal, no, and raisins, no. It's both. Both things. So, like, oatmeal chocolate chip, no? It's, like, better, but this it's still. It's better, but then why... When well, chocolate chip exists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have a good thing, you know. Don't yeah. ruin it with impurities like okay. oatmeal. I feel like oatmeal just goes back to milk, too. Because it's yeah. like you put milk. When you're making oatmeal, you put milk in it, right? Like that's part of it. I guess. Yeah. I, when you're making I don't it on know because I don't touch the stuff. Yeah. Or if you do the, the microwavable packets, you put water in it. Yes, the water I've had. Yeah, I've yeah. had that. Like, yeah. and, and it was ruined with cinnamon. Mm. Like I'm Indian. Cinnamon is not sweet things yeah. typically i mean yeah. a, a dash but dash. not yeah. typically and uh, it's a lot of cinnamon in america i think we kind of confuse it a little bit <laughs> uh, it's you know it's fine it's people yeah. like it that's cool yeah. i just didn't grow up with it so yeah. Yeah. sure different Don't use like case it. yeah mm-hmm. fair yeah oh man <laughs> i feel like i'm just just like <laughs> like Playing the anti-improv game. Like, no. no, Michael, not this, not this. But think about it like this. Point of view. Strong point of view. Yes. That's important in a scene. Playing, playing the character that is me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Second category. Why did I ask you about programming languages? Right. Go ahead. Uh, why did I ask you about Oh, why did I? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Why do you think? Uh, because uh, I am a software engineer mm-hmm. by profession. And uh, these days, I don't really program all, all that much. Yeah. Uh, I, I manage people who program. Mm. Uh, but I, you know, I really like it. Mm. I really like languages in general, programming languages in, in particular, because, yeah. of, because they're a lot easier to learn than, uh, you know, say Chinese or something for yeah. me. But like, yeah. it's... Uh, you know, you spend eight hours a day at work. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm luck- I'm one of those lucky people who enjoys what he does. Yeah. Um, so it never feels like a ton of work to me. Yeah. Now, thinking about it off the top of your head, do you have like a favorite language to work with and like a least favorite? You're like, oh, I hate, you know. I don't know. Yeah. Break there's a, there's a pro- programming language. I believe it's called, prologue Mm. and that language is just logic it's just a logical language so it's only like and and ors and and that like almost like a circuit Mm. and and it's really interesting to program in that because it's almost like a puzzle Mm. you want to get some simple thing done yeah printing a line gotta really work for it (laughs) And I really don't like Java. Mm. It's a popular language. I also do not like Java. Yeah. Just, Why I, do you not like Java? Oh, I just don't. It's gross. It's gross. Yeah. That's how I would describe yeah. it. Yeah. I, I recently, not re- well, 
yeah, recently took a Java class and I was like, this, I don't care for this. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's somehow too verbose and at the same time feels uh, like it doesn't achieve enough. No. It's just you write a lot of code and yeah. then it does something really basic and yeah. just like, like, wow, you added two numbers. Wow. Great job. That's a lot of work for something that a child could do on its fingers. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, there's a lot of hate. <laughs> Programmers are very opinionated as yeah. you can tell. Like oh, people yeah. will have battles over which language is better. Yeah. Frankly, language. they're all, they all have their place. Like, yeah. And depending I'll, on what work you're doing too. Right. Yeah. yeah. But uh, people will get quite uh, fanatical with their opinions and languages. I believe it. Not me, but Not others. others. Others, others. Well, this is an officially anti-Java podcast. Just so oh, you great. Know. Good. Yeah, as of uh, me finishing that class, <laughs> I said, well, I'm done with this. I just finished a Visual Basic class. I liked that a lot more, but oh. I know that's kind of a... It's not a dead language, but, you know, it's... It's, it's not in the top 10. You know what I mean? It, yeah. It, <laughs> it's kind of like, point. this does exist. Yeah. But we're not really, you know, we're not updating it anymore. It's kind of, yeah. yeah. So it'll remain, but I had a lot more fun in that. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, yeah. it, as long as you have fun, you know, that's, I had, like, I, when I teach mm. um, people who are not programmers, I ask them what makes them happy, you know, what creating what makes them happy and yeah. then i just the language or the uh system like mac or windows or whatever yeah. is secondary to what mm. derives pleasure even in something like programming and if you could achieve that like you want to make some animations on the on the web page great you want to do some math great um I found that people really like once they find that one thing that's like, oh, this was actually really sat satisfying. Mm. Then they like like it much more. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to help them find, yeah. like you said, the right thing. Discover, you know. Ah, I like that. I like yeah. that. I got a the next class I'm taking is Python. So we'll see. Oh, you're going to like it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I know that's actually useful. <laughs> Java and Visual Basic, real, too super relevant. Uh, Languages. Well, Java is still a lot used, but Python yeah. is one of those things that's like great to get into because yeah. you can do so many things. Yeah, like so many. Every it's used everywhere: math, yeah. like statistics, and other than programming, you know, animations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. a lot of potential. potential. AI, that's like the new thing. Uh, yeah, new oh, frontier. yeah, that's true. Yeah, a lot of Python. In there. Yeah, I just hey, watch out for those AI coders, man. They're they're not perfect, but <laughs> they they get some things right. They get. Yeah. 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 We'll leave it at that. They'll, they'll take our jobs. <laughs> they'll take our, it's, take it's going to get there. Yeah. yeah. It's going to get there. Yikes. <laughs> um, all right. The last category, things you love about San Diego. Why did I ask you about San Diego? Uh, because I went to school. <gasps> Woo! Whoop. I mean, you have more spirit for my school than I have because fun story. Our mm. football team was so bad that they, <laughs> broke the 10-year losing streak of Caltech, which is also another terrible mm. football team. So they just discontinued the team altogether. So oh. we didn't have a football team when I went there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, wow. the San Diego Tritons. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. were a boring-ass school. Mm. I had a good time, but yeah. because mm. of the beach. Great location. Great. Oh, yeah. man. What Great a location. Problem is everybody sleeps at 8 yeah. For some reason, everything's closed by 8 p.m. Yeah. Well, it's like you can't see the beach at night, you know? Oh, good point. Yeah. So it's like, what's the point of being awake? I never put that together when <laughs> I was there. Yeah. But that is a very good point. Yeah. I grew up down San Diego area. Oh. So, yeah, yeah. I'm very Which I'm area? passionate. Um, okay. Well, let's be transparent here. Transparent here. Not like the city of San Diego. I mean, I spent plenty of time there, like North County, Vista, North Oceanside. County. Yeah. Yeah. But. You know, I know like El Cajon, La Jolla, San Diego, La Mesa, you know, all that stuff. Kearney Mesa. Yeah. Yeah, you know it. You yeah. Know the yeah. lay of the land. That's cool. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful place. So nice. It's so hard this, to leave. It's yeah. hard to leave. Yeah. 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 Hard to leave. Hodads, I know that. Oh, man. Legendary. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> Take me back. <laughs> right? Take me back. Take me back. All right. Did you have, um while you lived down there for school, was Hodad's like your favorite food place or did you have one spot in particular? Like? 
this is my spot. There was a small uh, strip mall. Mm. Uh, now I don't remember the name of the place, but it was a pizza place. All right, and they had pizza by the slice, which mm. was mm. Uh, not a co- it's not a common thing no, in not Southern here. California. No. So they had pizza by the slice. Not just that, but they had deep dish pizza by the slice, mm. and that was my first yeah. experience with deep dish. I've never, I've been to Chicago. I've never eaten deep dish pizza. Mm anywhere but there well okay. a couple other places but that's where the where i had it first yeah and i would go there once a week yeah to get that pizza I mean, a slice Come it on. was my god those are some great memories yeah i believe it. that pizza and i didn't take anybody with me i don't want anybody to come nah, i wanted know. that pizza for me yeah and my time yeah it's great preserve Good. the pizza yeah yeah or preserve like- the memory I like that a lot. Yeah. Like like you said, by the slice, yeah. I mean, you know, New York, it's like everywhere you turn, yeah. you can do that. But here, no. Because what, rare. Domino's? No. Oh, absolutely. You know, <laughs> Domino's by the slice, that would be. <laughs> that would be. I be think something. that would be not economical for that company. No, no, not at all. Because, I mean, the pizza's already like $10 for the whole thing. So. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a dollar. The quality's not there. Yeah, to it would probably it. fall apart in your hands. I mean, it already does. It's like yeah. eating cardboard. But, yeah, you know, I. It's one of the like I, I ever since then I've tried to look for pizza by the slice places yeah. in here in California, and mm. uh, they always remind me of that place, mm. not of New York, which I've yeah you know gone too many times. Yeah, that's another that's another level. It's another yeah. It's yeah. got a you know it, it's not special there. Yeah. It's special here. Yeah, because it's rare. It's rare. All right. I'm going to ask you about two places, LA places that do pizza by the slice. I'm going to throw them at you. All right. First one, uh, Purgatory Pizza. Okay. Purgatory Pizza. Ever been there? I've heard of it. Never okay. been there. I, I'd highly recommend. They got some really good pizza. Second one, Prince Street Pizza. Yes. Yes. Also haven't been there, but okay. uh, need to go. Mm. I usually go in the, uh, I have a couple of places in Culver City where I live Ooh, okay. that are, you know, decent. Yeah, so yeah, I'll yeah. go get a slice, a cheese, a simple cheese slice. Sometimes that's what you want, you know. Make just my clean. day just yeah. absolutely, I'm happy the entire day no matter what happens. Yeah, a well done slice of cheese is hard to beat. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. Just like, wow, they did cheese pizza really well. That says something. Yep. You know, that means they don't have to cover it with a bunch of toppings to like make up for the lack of quality yeah okay you know the the bread the bread quality mm-hmm. structure mm-hmm. sauce mm. cheese there you go that's all it takes yeah that's all it takes that's all it takes you are a man of fine taste thank you i i appreciate it besides uh i'll fight you on the oatmeal cookie thing but <laughs> other than that other than that i respect it i respect it thank you. <laughs> all right so sushant We've talked pizza. We've talked San Diego. We've talked coating. We've talked cookies. We've talked milk. But now, I mean, the real reason we're here. We're here to talk about improv. Yep. All right. So I want you to take us back to the first time in your life you heard about, learned about, saw, thought about improv. When was that for you? For me, it was when I was in high school. Hmm. Uh I mean, it was on TV. You know, a lot of people I know discovered improv through Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yep, yep. Uh, with with Colin Mockery and, and Wayne Brady and and the whole crew there from, from I, th- I guess, like the mid-2000s. I don't know when they started, but yeah, I, think- I found them in the mid-2000s. Yeah, same. Yeah, and uh, they just seemed to have so much fun. mm they were just having a good time and and i've always i've always wanted to you know perform um not necessarily like to a specific um audience or or a specific type of performance i've i've i like when i was a child i did some like plays and musicals yeah, and things yeah like part of school part of school yeah, yeah. um or like part of the community sort of theater. Sure, sure. Um, but middle school and and high school, I moved to the U.S. in high school, and uh, everything was kind of new and and scary. Yeah. And this just seemed approachable, and I never took that step to go find myself 
that outlet mm-hmm. until I did. Yeah. And it opened up a whole world for me. Mm. Yeah. So it was like high school, you kind of learned about it. Learned about so it. You like, you didn't saw, do anything with it. Yeah. Didn't even really watch. I watched a few improv shows, yeah. but didn't really find my, my place. Um, so one, f- a friend of mine, he was performing here uh, mm. at IFTP. And he told me, hey, you know, they do classes here. Mm. And immediately, literally that night, I signed up. Wow. So you came and saw the show? Yep. Yeah. How'd your friend do? Did he, did he do a good job? Yeah, he's, he was great. He performed with, you know, all, several of our instructors. So I got oh, to see nice, them before nice. I became a pupil. Yeah. And um, I didn't know their names, but yeah. I just saw uh, Ava's class mm. uh, said, uh, mm-hmm. good for... For newbies, mm, yeah. it doesn't anymore, but it did back then. <laughs> and uh, I clicked that class because it, you know, it was, it was on Mondays and it gave me time. Uh, I had time then and uh, haven't looked back. I'm still in that same class. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So you've, I mean, you've spent some time there now and you've probably grown like in that class a lot. I oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So leading up to before the time you joined IFTP, I think like you said, there had maybe been like in the back of your mind an interest in doing improv or something like it, but it just the opportunity hadn't arisen yet. And you were busy with other things, finishing school, getting your career started and things like that. Yeah, yeah I I did take acting classes. So I was mm. screen acting okay, for yeah, a while. Yeah. Um, and it's LA, that's what and you And it's do. LA, you yeah. know, and, and you know, it was something that uh, a friend of mine and I wanted to do for a while. Yeah. Um, we, we just, we decided, Hey, you know, this, the classes are fun, but I'm not like, I didn't really find that uh, screen acting was, or dramatic, just dramatic acting was mm. really that interesting. Maybe if I had taken a theater class, I would have been more, um, more interested because I enjoyed yeah. the live aspect of performance yeah. So I took those classes and I enjoyed them. I learned a lot, but a um, few times in that class, we did improv as a, uh, as like a fun activity, hmm. not really to grow or to learn, but yeah. just to let off a, a little bit of steam after a heavy yeah. um, class. And I had more fun in that <laughs> session than I did in anything else. And I, that's when I really sort of thought about, wow, this is, this is what I really like doing. Yeah. It started clicking. It started clicking. And that was, you know, five years ago. Yeah. And I didn't take any actions. I guess I was just, uh, lazy, afraid. Mm. I don't know. One of those things. Yeah. Just like probably all. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, uh, I knew what I, I knew that I would enjoy it. I just didn't take the step. Mm. So when I've, found IFTP, it was kind of um, a culmination and, and a little bit of a release of, of pressure on myself. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, you did it. You actually took a step. Even if I didn't continue, um, I think I would have still been a little bit content with that fact. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, even... Even so, I think the timing worked out because, like you said, it was what that was about five years ago. I mean, yeah. not too much before the pandemic, basically. Right. Pandemic hit, you couldn't really do improv for a while. Mm-hmm. And then things passed, time passed, and you were probably finally able to jump in. Like you said, 2022, things got, I think that's when, yeah, because when I joined, we had to wear masks for classes, like, but they were in person. And that was August, like 2021. Um, and this was one of the only places doing it. It was like you had to show proof of vaccination and you had to wear masks for classes. Those were requirements. And so I remember we did that for a while and it took, it was a while before masks came off. Cause you know, getting into 2022 even, I think. I can't remember when exactly that changed. Yeah, it might have. Yeah. I, my, I think we needed proof of vaccination. Yeah. Still when I uh, started class. I, yeah. Yeah don't remember i might be wrong but it feels like it was something Mm -hmm. um for the show that i'd been to i definitely i think it was that was before um uh mid 2002 but or 
Sorry, 2022. Whoa. <laughs> I know. It's a long time. Dang, mid 2000. You've been in IFTP a while. Oh, yeah. I'm a, you know. <laughs> they didn't even exist back then. <laughs> uh, I'm one of the originals. Wow. Uh, no. Pre Matthew Moore. <laughs> right. Yeah. I told him you should make. No, I'm just no kidding. Way. You uh, came up with. <laughs> Sushant, oh my gosh. I feel like Matt has told that story, the origin story. I'm pretty sure he has on yeah. the podcast. He has, yeah. He yeah. was like episode uh, 13. Yeah, so yeah. I, I remember. So I um, I think it's easily refutable. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. We could, we could basically <laughs> say what anything we want at this point. Right. It was, you know, it was like 50 episodes ago. Right. Who's going to so, remember? No, I don't remember, so. and I was there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, 2022, I, I feel like we did masks. I feel yeah. like we did. Yeah, I think for a good good chunk of the year, the yeah. world was just different back then. Yeah, that's a lot. It. Everybody was a lot more wary, as was yeah. I. Yeah. Uh, I so see. it was interesting time. Everybody was sort of coming out of the woodwork or uh, hibernation almost. Yeah, kind of asking, can we be normal? Like, yeah, yeah. Nobody was entirely sure. Yeah, yeah. Especially with that higher pitch. Yeah. Normal. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. The school, I was still a middle school teacher back then. And during that time, we were, yeah, we were all still wearing masks at school too. For, I think, almost to the end of that school year, I think maybe the last month or two, it changed. Like, or you could take them off while you were outside or something. But then back in the classroom, you had to have them on. And that was, you know, June 2022. So feel like it must have been the most oppressive for kids because what else are you going to do in class i mean yeah it's like talk a thing know. to play with on your face too. yeah <laughs> yeah they um uh, there was this phenomenon with uh you know like the the disposable masks like the straps yeah uh you know mask breaks you take the strap off you could use it to saw through chairs and other things just by the friction wow and i just so i had several chairs in my classroom that just had like were partially sawn in half. Um, cause that is surprising. That's impressive. That is a strong, elastic yeah. product. Yeah, that part of those masks is very well made. <laughs> wow. Wouldn't have expected that use, but... No, the creativity. Well, I and, guess with improv, you can't be surprised. Well, yeah, you know, kids were yes-anding those <laughs> yeah. little straps. Well, like, and if you do it on your skin, it'll like cause burns and cuts, and like after a while... It's bad because it's kind of like a rubber band almost. Yeah. So um, I don't miss that. And I'm glad <laughs> it's not I'm, as much of a thing I anymore. I bet you don't. No. It sounds painful. Yeah. Well, it's just like, why, why are you doing that to the chair? Why are you doing that to the desk? Like, please, please. Yeah. But it's like, you have to have this thing on your face. And some kids would be like, oh, my mask broke. And then, you know, take oh, off the of little course. string and be like, oh, quote, can, unquote, can I get broke. another one, mister? Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, you know, kids, kids are kids. They got to learn, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Bring us back on topic. Okay. So you came here to IFTP, this hidden, the hidden improviser within you who had been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. You saw a show. You joined David's class. Great for beginners. What were those first couple classes like from what you can remember? I remember being nervous. Yeah. But. Ava has a way with uh, her students mm -hmm. where she puts them at ease uh, without uh, without making it seem like they are uh, they don't belong or or otherwise are new mm. to uh, to her or or the class. Um, yeah. So. For me, you know, moving to this country, uh, I had I had a lot of problems uh, feeling included. Mm. Uh, I always felt different, but uh, Ava's class allowed me to feel included in the activities that were happening, to mm. learn, um, to not feel like I was out of place, even in the first class. And that's what uh, that's what made me come back again and again, and mm. it still makes me come back uh, because it's a very uh, it builds you up the class. She builds you up in the class yeah. and uh, you leave her class feeling good about yourself. Mm. Um, and that's, that's a rare feeling. That's a rare quality. Uh, and, and I really appreciate having that in my life. Yeah, definitely. 
Because I think there's not a lot of extracurricular activities can make you feel that way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And Mondays is, you know, I look forward to them. I, I know that whatever hardship I go through, there's always um, this place, this community I can go to where I can be my own self. Yeah. Un, um, unadulterated by the uh, stresses of life. Mm. And it's a good thing to have, I think, um, for anybody. I mean, I, I'm... I enjoy this particular activity, but yeah, just that ha that feeling uh, that, yeah. or that that ability to always have something to look forward to. Yeah, uh, I've been in a place in my life where I didn't have that, and it felt terrible. Yeah, so this what, is you know what am I nice. doing here? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's yeah. stuck in life, you know, stuck in a rut. Um, there's always something to to look forward to, so I I enjoy that about IFTP. Yeah. And I mean, that every Monday, too. It's just like, oh, yeah, next Monday, you know, I'm going to see so-and-so. I'm going to yeah. be in class again. Because yeah. Yeah. I, I would imagine, um, you know, having been in that same Monday class for a little while, you've built, like, a group of friends in there, I'm sure, too. Yeah. It's like, there's people you know, you're going to see them every week, and that, that feels really good. Yeah. It's it's always a pleasant uh, evening to, to to see and catch up and, and get to play with people. Like, yeah. the, the, the feeling of play or mm. playing is seldom uh encouraged in yeah. in adulthood uh you know and i've brought that energy from iftp into the rest of the as rest like the other aspects of my life like mm. work and and family and mm. um and other friendships and and it's always people always react well mm. Yeah. People want to play. People want yeah. to be able to play and be and feel like it's okay to play. And uh, you know, improv has given me that platform, mm. not just in class, but outside. And uh yeah, and that's been transformative. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you said, people want that and I don't think they always realize that they're missing it or that they don't even have it anymore. Yeah. You know, for many folks, it's just like you just grow up one day. <laughs> yeah. It's no longer a part of your life. It's gone and you never even knew it left. I know. Yeah. It's, yeah, people think growing up means losing yeah. that childlike curiosity and playfulness. But yeah. to me, it's not that. It's, it's just about having more responsibilities and being able to be a civic citizen um, in society and uh, building that life, but doesn't mean you lose those aspects of yourself. You yeah. know? Can I ask, do you have an example of bringing that sense of play into like family or work life? Yeah. Uh, so I have um, a couple of teams that I mm. manage and I had a challenge um, during the pandemic of, I hired, um, I hired, from a team of two people, I um, grew it to a team of four people or six people. Mm. So there were four new people. Yeah, wow. And you know, nobody was going to the office. People didn't have uh, that chemistry yet. Yeah. And what I did was I just um, I would organize these events and I would play, literally mm. play games so you know these people were coming from different backgrounds whatever viewpoints and we would play pictionary or or mm. code names and such but oh code names it yeah. was never a banal game mm. like a perfunctory activity it yeah. was always hey i'm gonna make jokes and i'm gonna pull focus on myself so that you don't have to make conversation mm. i'm going to mm just like start telling jokes or like make fun of people or whatever they're doing, um, you know, in a sort of encouraging, endearing way. And people caught on to that slowly and they started doing it to each other. And that built a rapport that I, that was really missing Yeah. Um, in the pandemic and, and after. And, and now the team is so strong mm. that, you know, they, they will, 
defend each other mm. to anybody and everybody, including me. <laughs> I'm, I'm the outsider yeah, yeah. on that team. So they're very closely knit. And I consider that a very precious thing uh, when people, like three of them have never been in an office. They're mm. out of college. Yeah. And, but they still feel like somebody miles away, thousands of miles away is still wow. close to them. Yeah. And, and they feel comfortable. So that's a, you know, that's a, that's a really precious thing for me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's hard to build that sense of like community and belonging. I think, like yeah. you said, it's during the pandemic, you're hired, you know, over Zoom or whatever. You, you have some meetings over Zoom. You maybe like slack someone, you yeah. know, like it just feels yeah. so impersonal. Yeah. It can feel so impersonal. Yeah. And you know, that, that joy of feeling comfortable to play with somebody. I think that really built those bonds that, you know, you wouldn't be able to build over like, Hey, let's get to know each other over coffee or yeah. whatever, like a zoom meeting or even, even uh, structured, planned uh team activities so i just found playing games and just having a good you know just having fun with each other was important more than working well with each other and yeah. kind of one followed with the other yeah i think it'll lead to that yeah and i think too just playing games it's like oftentimes that's a structure people are comfortable with yeah and you know it, it gives you direction yeah so it's like okay i may be nervous or i may not know anyone but we're playing this game I know the rules and like, I want to win. So, you know, like yeah. I want to do well. Yeah. And I think that just naturally kind of forces people to work together and yeah. find a groove. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, that like improv, I, I carried like that energy of improv of, of taking things and doing things extempore mm. with, even with a structured game, you know, just having a completely, uh, unhinged conversation about, I don't know, like building a fireplace in the middle of the office that was all glass so that Santa <laughs> could come in and deliver gifts safely oh. and you could see him. Um, so, you know, it made no sense. It was not related to games or whatever, but yeah. it was just sort of gray spacing and people gray spacing yeah. in response that allowed them to kind of explode out of the the guarded nature that they carried at work mm. yeah you kind of get some to loosen up and open yeah, up a little just bit loosen up you know yeah. say silly things because it's safe yeah and i mean you got me thinking <laughs> it's like the whole chimney's made of glass right yeah yes yeah, so you could see santa come down the chimney yeah. but he has to have uh, an escape hatch mm. and it you know Smart. so smart and who's going to clean? There were a lot of logistical right, yeah, problems with this. That becomes like, that's got to get really dirty if it, you right, know, the it's soot, soot, the ash. Yeah. Well, and then the outside too, you probably got a wind exit. Yeah. So it is a kind of a logistical nightmare. Yeah. But there um, is, I mean, what is it? Coal that burns with that soot or something? Right. Yeah. You can get some clean burning. Clean burning yeah. things. Yeah. Maybe natural gas. I oh, know. I don't know. Natural gas. You're right. Yeah. I think it's natural gas, but, but then, you know, just, does Santa Claus, does he count natural gas fireplaces? Will he go through those, you know, or, or is, does he stick to the traditional wood burning? Well, we sure. could trick him by having, um, you know, fake smoke coming out of the top of the chimney. There you so go. he jumps down and then yeah. he's uh, completely taken, Yeah, you know, and yeah. we'll probably trap him. Mm. Un infinite gifts. Yeah, and be able to Those kind of ideas. observe and yeah. Yeah, infinite gifts. I like that. Yeah. Exploit Santa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> engineers right exploit yeah, everything yeah. So, well you're just trying to maximize efficiency yes yes yeah. i mean we could resell those gifts mm. at um uh mark high high premiums it's true you know heavily marked up yeah it's monopolizing santa yeah i mean santa already i mean kind of is a monopoly in right a way. Yeah. Well, yeah but i mean i don't know if santa makes money off of the gifts that's probably true. through merchandising and branding that's true yeah merchandising branding i mean he probably yeah. does deals with you know big toy companies right. and things yeah. like that yeah mattel yeah, yeah mattel sure lego yeah yeah i mean disney you know they probably oh man i can't say anything bad about the company i work for you know yeah it's yeah be. santa disney i'm sure they've collabed a few times oh i'm sure yeah, yeah. Get some, a lot of movies one yeah, of them a lot of movies yeah. A lot of movies. A lot of merch you got to push. Every Disney movie, you know, it's got to have a cute little creature that can be turned into a plushie. Yeah. And then sold. 
Exactly. And Santa's all over that. And he's like, all right, elves, <laughs> we got to make this uh, new chicken this year, like whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like Moana's chicken. Mm. It's very derpy chicken. Yeah. Hey, hey. Is that what it's? Yeah. Is? Okay. That's, I, the, that's what the chicken I was thinking of from Moana. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good chicken. I yeah, mean, it's, it's, a great, it's, it's a great character. Yeah. Yeah. Not to uh, uh, slander uh, any companies, but. Like off the top of my head, that's like the last good Disney animated movie I can think of. That's I know it's not true. They've made more, but like that one, like really stood out. You know, I, really I like did. Yeah I, yeah, I liked the songs in yeah. that movie too. Strong music, so, yeah. strong characters. I mean, yeah, there's been a, like Luca was all right. Uh, I like Turning Red. Well, that's Pixar. Um, Pixar's still Disney. Yeah, that's true. They, they just they've gobbled up a lot of uh, yeah. IP. Yeah, yeah. You gotta it's. It's hard to differentiate at this point. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, Luca, turning red. I should know this, but I, I'm also blanking on. Uh, I didn't, there's a movies. new one, Wish. I didn't see it. Uh, Soul is that what it's called? Yeah, Soul yeah, is. Soul. Well. It was during COVID. You know, that's just tough. Any movies that came yeah. out during like deep COVID like that, it, it gets lost. Yeah, I think because it wasn't theatrical. It's just like oh, Disney Plus. Yeah, it's like direct to DVD. <laughs> It, yeah. it essentially is yeah. Yeah. Uh, at this point. Even more accessible because I don't have to go anywhere to get it. Yeah. I kind of like it. I yeah. mean, theaters are great and all, but yeah. I wait for them to come on to uh, streaming services. Yeah. I mean, it's convenient. I'm already paying for the streaming service, you know, so yeah. it's like it, it helps you get the value out of the subscription. Yeah. 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 Which is, that's the whole point. Yeah. Better world now. Better, Better world, world now. Better world now. Wow. Now imagine this tangent started off with us talking about integrating play into the workplace. <laughs> and then we got to discussing the value of streaming services. Yes. This is what I'm talking about. And I like uh, tangents because yeah. they oh, take no, you to too. places you didn't think yeah. were possible. Yeah, that's my favorite part of the podcast is like, we'll end up somewhere. And I'm like, I don't even. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, if, I, yeah. Took yeah. a turn on that's the street the that had no name. That's half and you ended up in Wonderland. Yeah, different city, different town, yeah. different country, different planet. Yeah. I actually did end up in a different country. Um, in that's in true. Croatia, I took a wrong turn. <gasps> I think it was uh, Montenegro we ended up in. Mm. Well, it wasn't a wrong turn. I mean, we knew that. we It wasn't the place we were going. I was like, I purposefully turned into a random uh exit or whatever mm. and uh yeah it was, it was a great time wow so you were you were in croatia yeah we like we like turn and we just like driving in a random direction I had no idea mm. uh, just for fun you know yeah, we, just we had gps let's find our way back yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah let's yeah. see what happens sure uh, we found a town where nobody spoke english but mm. there was a bench by a church that had uh wireless chargers on it, it was really wow. random a village it was a small village and yet this bench that's it was. I don't. I've never seen a bench with a wireless charger. Yeah, it was anywhere. One bench. Huh. There was literally one bench, hmm. in like this little park outside the church. Yeah. And that one bench had two wireless chargers. <laughs> what? Yeah. And that that's it. Like that was the square, the the, the village square. Yeah. And then there were like yeah. people. Like that's there the were like two town. or three people in the entire village we yeah. could find. Yeah. But it was you know, and then we ended up at the border of Montenegro. Wow. Oh. Oh, cool. okay. <laughs> we should maybe turn back, though. Yeah, yeah. We just went across. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. I I want to know more about this wireless charger bench. That's just that's I, just like I know it in it the came small out of town. Nowhere. Yeah, yeah. It, it we 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 took a random turn and then we were driving and then we ended up in this village. And yeah. the reason we like even wanted to go into the village was because mm. we were all hungry. Yeah. And we didn't know how to ask for food yeah. in uh, Croatian. Mm. So oh, we were just wandering the streets mm. looking for anything that looked like a restaurant. And yeah. let me tell you something. Mm. It was lunchtime. Mm. And we, there were two people smoking outside what looked like a, um, a dive bar or yeah. a restaurant. Like Basically a cafe. It looked yeah, like a cafe something. bar. Yeah. Um, and we walked in and there was one person who spoke some some very light broken English. So yeah. with a lot of hand gestures, yeah. which may or may not have been in, you know, insulting to them. Um, we mm. managed to understand that there was no food 
mm. until like the evening and there mm. were only drinks yeah. alcohol we could do yeah um so off we went and while walking we discovered this odd bench that huh. and it was clean too it wasn't mm. like dusty and grimy like nobody had used it it seemed like it 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 those chargers got frequent use yeah I don't know who is going there to charge their phones, but uh, it, you know. That's the place. It must have been, uh, yeah, it must have been the meeting place mm. for that village. Yeah. New destination hotspot. Yeah. A small village in Croatia near the border of Montenegro. Some, yeah. I don't know if it was near the border. It was somewhere. I yeah. can't remember. So it exactly. was somewhere. Again, yeah. we did not look at directions. Yeah, the wireless directions. charging bench. You got to find it. This, yeah. is, uh, this is the place to charge your phone. Yeah. The place. Number one it place. It will charge at a very slow speed. Probably five watts. Be, yeah. It's like. Maybe some birds, some yeah. maybe some missionaries. I don't know what. Could be quite. Was, yeah. was it scenic at least? It was beautiful. Okay. Yeah. It was, then that makes up. We got it. some local honey from a random farmer. His While his wife was out there. What is it? Beekeeping? Yeah. Beekeeping. Yeah. Wow, um, that sounds great. It was it was yeah. a, it was an interesting trip. Yeah, I think here's what I think: the good people of this t- small town, they were like, "All right, <laughs> phones are a problem, right? People are on their phones. So what if we make a bench where you know? Because the good and bad thing about wireless chargers, you can't really use your phone while it's on the wireless that charger, is true, unless you have MagSafe on an iPhone. But it's expensive because it's proprietary. Anyway, TM, TM, that's true. Well, Qi Wireless Charging Two standard. Coming out, it makes MagSafe for all phones, but it's not there yet. It's, it's uh, be on the lookout. We will be anticipating. We, we, the people of Croatia eager, eagerly await the Qi <laughs> Wireless uh, 2 charging standard. Anyway, so you put your phone down. It's on the wireless charger. You can't use your phone. You can take a moment to be in the moment. In the moment. Take in the beautiful town. Yeah. Scenery. You know, your phone's charging. It's handling its business, but you can just... You know, and maybe Locker. that's why. Maybe that was the reasoning. Yeah, maybe that's why there were maybe only not. Two. Maybe this is dumb, but <laughs> maybe some. Maybe the mayor found a bunch of money under mm. his cot. Also, and that yeah. he had to explain it away. So he's like, well, "It's for public works." Yeah, public and, works. Yeah, public works. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, yeah, interesting project. But I see that's there's a lot of practical use cases. But then it raises questions like, what happens if it rains? Um, I don't know how they, wireless charger doesn't they, implement they weather. Were, uh, they were behind some plastic, clear, see-through plastic. So oh, okay. I assume that they were weatherproofed. Oh, got it, got it. Um, yeah. And I don't know. We sat on the bench. Yeah. And we looked around, and it was beautiful as, you know, olden Europe tends to be. Yeah. Um, you know, old sort of. Some some Roman influenced buildings, mm, Greek Roman architecture, yeah. and it you know it it definitely it definitely was a place you would sit down and just look mm. with or without the chargers. It didn't matter. Yeah, you're selling it. You're selling it. I gotta find this bench. I'm buying <laughs> tickets tonight. Yep. Gotta get lost in Croatia. Get lost. You'll find a town with a bench. Mm. I'll bring I'll bring multiple phones. I want to <laughs> yeah, get get the whole tech set up on yeah, the bench. Yeah, yeah. Be like, all right, let's try this one out. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. On the Android, iPhone, anything you want. Yeah, charge it to the max. You know, you you'll have that like Croatian charge. You know, when you bring it back to the states. Yeah, it's like, like this is bringing electricity from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of cool. Yeah, you know? I'm pretty sure it was solar too. Ooh. It was. This is some modern shit in okay. a yeah very not modern it's kind of a juxtaposition town. of it it's like yeah. this solar powered wireless charging bench next to like this like it's like this franciscan yeah. church probably thousands of years old potentially yeah like, it, it, it like because they're the yeah. fr- like franciscan like though they're yeah. not like very adorned they're not like yeah. catholic like, grand churches they're just yeah, like simple cathedral, but. dumpy building yeah just part of the town part of the community yeah some bricks wow. were missing, you know, whatever. Wow. It yeah. was. They got the greatest bench contrast. of all time, apparently. Yeah. Wow. You know, I just had a weird thought because you said bringing Croatian power like in your phone. <laughs> so like your phone battery, right? Like how often do people really let their phone die all the way? I guess not. 
Well, how responsible are we talking? Yeah, I mean, it are. depends on the person, right? Yeah. There's some people who are so cavalier with yeah. their power. Yeah. Like, I get a little anxious when my phone does the whole 20%. Do oh, you want yeah. to... I hate it. Yeah, so... But my brother, on the other hand, often his phone's completely dead. Mm. And... It's not la- it's it's not for lack of anxiety. He's an yeah. anxious person, but yeah. still somehow survives in the world, just letting it die, charging it to five percent, <laughs> picking it off. I'm yeah. like, just let it go, just let it go for a while. But yeah, because no. I'm I'm thinking, and this is probably like all like I guess it would be electrical engineers are probably yelling at me, but like. <laughs> You know, if you charge your phone in one place but never let it die, does like just a teeny bit of that energy from that one charge from that one place stay in there, or is it you know it's probably replaced, you know, in the cells of the battery, right? Right. Yeah. Because it's a living organism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Well, no, batteries have cells. I know. Yeah. <laughs> just the way you said it, I was like the cells, the, cells. the mitochondria the, yeah. of the phone. Yeah, it's the powerhouse yes. of the cell of the battery. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, so don't discredit my theory. I am not an electrical engineer. Can you charge your phone on all seven continents and have power from all seven continents in your phone at the same time? Uh, That's you know, what this boils down Philosophically speaking, uh, yes. Yes, yes we Literally? Can. Uh, I mean, electrons don't belong to anywhere in that's particular. True. So, yeah, they're not but geographical. Philosophically, you know, yeah. in our hearts, yeah. that's what's happening. Yeah. As long as you believe, you make it real. Yeah, that's true. As long as you can tell people that it happened, it happened. Yeah. I mean, you could just um, ship a battery bank somewhere each of the seven continents and then have them mailed back to you, charged up, like mailed back to you. Sounds like an expensive adventure. <laughs> <laughs> but think of it. Think of it. Be like, oh, yeah, I got some electricity. What do you need? Antarctica? What you need? Africa? <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, I got Australia. Well, what would be even more slightly expensive, but mm. even more satisfying is if you had a solar setup in each of those continents and mm. one wire from that solar oh. going all the way to wherever you are in oh, that'd be great yeah so each like you have continuous oh yeah power the, yeah just anywhere of the captured Earth. on the continent mm-hmm. it's not you know yeah produced on the continent yeah. you can't really create energy same but sun too that's the crazy thing same sun yeah same yeah. sun well if that's what you believe but you know we all know that's not true they're, Am I right? Think they're different suns. Oh, on absolutely. Each okay. Yeah. There's no I, way we're, we're all sharing that thing. I, we live in a simulation anyway, yeah. so anything we yeah. look at is probably yeah. manufactured for yeah, our it's projecting particular from benefit. Else. Yeah. 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 Thank you for understanding. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. Even their eyeballs. I mean, the sun you see is probably a different sun than what I see. Well, yeah, it might be programmed a little differently. You know, yeah. Yeah. I might the have sun different I see filters is on my green, eyes. Yeah. So I hope that's wow, normal. Nice. Or considered in it's the not, realm of okay. From what I've seen, it's not okay. So yeah. normal, not for you. That's okay. We can all be different. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> all right. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know where we ended up. No, I love it. This is the good stuff. This is why we're here. This is why we're here to talk about if you can really have electricity from all seven continents in your phone at the same time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to say you can, and we'll leave it at that. Perfect. If you believe in your heart, you can. That's all belief. That's how the world works. End of discussion. Not yeah. fact, science, or anything. Mm-mm. Yeah. Who, who cares about all that? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Sushant. So, thinking back to IFTP and this wonderful tangent we, we just went down. Um, your time here at IFTP, I'd say, well, you've been in class probably over a year at this point, right? Yeah, over yeah, a year. Because 2023, we're about yeah. done. It's December 19th. Good Lord. It's December 19th. Um, how would you say you've grown as an improviser during your time here? From those initial classes to now, this year plus later? Um, I think being able to physically alter my, or alter my physicality. Mm. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fairly laid back person, but I have a, a particular, um, you know, gait, mm. uh, a particular way i keep myself yeah and that's generally how i go through the various st- parts of my life i don't alter that too much and that's how i came in um mm. but with improv i found the ability to change uh how i talked 
or how I walked or how mm. I, uh, you know, presented myself uh, in the diff in different situations. And I think that like working on that aspect uh, has been really, that's been my growth area for the last year or so. Um, and I think I've gotten to a place where I'm more comfortable doing those things, uh, doing um, different accents or, uh, or taking a different physical posture mm. um, or just generally being more comfortable in my body when I am pretending, uh, when I'm just pretending, mm. uh, like putting my hand on my hip, uh, you know, it's just a little thing that yeah. uh, I did in the class uh, recently. And just that little change, I don't think I would have done last year. Mm. I don't think I would be comfortable doing it last year. Yeah. It's like opening up your physicality. Yeah. 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 A space work to um, paying attention to the details and sort of committing to that. Mm. Uh, just anything around my body. Words are fine, uh, but even even using words, reacting, um, I have a very sort of mellow one one tone reaction to everything. Mm. Even horrible news, I won't react in a very, um, I guess, accentuated manner. Mm. It'll just be a very, uh, what's the word? A, a very passive looking reaction from me, like just a very placid face yeah. um, uh, or stoic even sometimes not, I'm not stoic, but I won't like, I'll basically have one way of reacting. Yeah. And improv has allowed me to sort of allow myself to react and, and kind of exaggerate the reaction to fit mm. the situation. Cause a lot of times an expected reaction is, is, or somebody tells me something and they expect a certain reaction and the reaction they get clashes. Mm. <laughs> and that's not because I'm not reacting. It's more because I don't like know how to change and to really bring the feeling I have inside yeah. out physically. Yeah. So improvs allow me to sort of grow into that and allow myself to whatever it is, smile yeah. at, when I feel like smiling mm. real mm -hmm. wide or, or actually show some surprise or anger in my voice and my, my face uh, or my hands or whatever. So that, that's been kind of cool to see. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a ton of growth. Ton of yeah. Growth, it's which is <laughs> fantastic. It's a ton of growth that is, um, you know, satisfying because it's something that I have actually worked on mm. and I've seen, changes in myself um that sort of feed back into into those th that sort of work that i've put in and i'm the sort of i, I like i'm very flea like my my attention is very ephemeral mm. so i have like a hobby of the month type stuff sure sure um except for improv where i've been able to like continue and put in work and yeah. sort of not i've kept at it kept at it yeah like because i tend to just float away from something pretty quickly. Like one month I'll be playing guitar. Another month I'll be like, you know, uh, sitting, like trying to produce a podcast with my grandma. Like it, sure. and then the next month it's gone. Uh, uh, it's, it's just not the grandma fun. cast. It's eventually it'll happen. Eventually. Right. But, you know, right. it's well, one of know. those, <laughs> yeah, I will know. ask for tips. Right. Um, but yeah, so, so improv is kind of yeah. my thing I've stuck to. Yeah, and I've really stable, appreciated consistent. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which I think that says something about it and about you as a person too. You're like, hey, this is the thing for me. And even if I am challenged by it or if it's new to me, I'm going to stick with it and keep yeah. doing it and, and putting yourself in a situation where you might not always feel comfortable. That's huge. Yeah. You know, yeah. Week and, over week. And, and I've found it like the community. I mean, this is this speaks to Matt and the community he's mm -hmm. sort of fostered in IFTP and, of course, all the, all the um, faculty like yourself it's very um it's very engaged and so mm. i feel comfortable when i'm struggling and i have struggled a few times asking for help and mm. people sort of being like yeah i'll help you work through this mm. i will 
stand with you and uh, and we together will achieve the result you're looking for and and it's gotten me through several sort of um speed bumps mm. in my improv um learning so that's you know it, it, the community is really important like it's yeah. it's huge like i don't think i would have stuck with i have, like with improv at all if i didn't feel that inclusivity yeah. um and and camaraderie with people definitely yeah that's i love that yeah and like you said it's i mean you got to be able to ask for help on things sometimes i mean especially yeah, with improv we all need help sometimes yeah. Like, yeah. and being able to recognize that and then go through with it is a huge thing I think yeah. it takes some people a long time to learn that yeah, yeah. i mean it's it's i can apply that to life too now it's yeah. not i'm not used to asking for help it's yeah. not something i'm good at yeah me neither <laughs> it's hard you know it's yeah. like hey i'm a, I'm, a, I'm the oldest child mm. so i've always had to sort of you're helping i'm the yeah. one helping so now you know my younger brother i will ask his help in so many things mm. and i don't feel like awkward or, or or ashamed or anything like that i'm just like you know what and he comes through mm. comes through just like iftp comes through mm. iftp comes through all right sushant i got a couple more questions for you and then we're gonna we're gonna do some improv all right we've already had some good gray spacing about a conspiracy conspiracy <laughs> theories yeah, yeah, about yeah. the earth um the sun is fake yeah. anyway um second to last question for you and i think you touched on this a lot so maybe this is just a recap but i'm gonna ask it anyway sure um, so overall, what do you think has been the impact of improv in your life? Um, yeah, like, you know, we've talked about it. If I were to sort of identify one aspect that it's brought yeah. to my life, it's been um, feeling comfortable in my own body and my own voice and my own ability uh, there are days when I feel like, man, I am just not as talented as all, all the other people. Mm. And there are other days when I'm like, wow, I am so happy being able to experience, you know, the, the sort of play and fun and, 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 and community that improv brings. So for me, it's like been a journey to go from, hey, I'm like, I'm all right with my body and whatever. But then to discover something that's like, whoa, I actually enjoy this. I actually enjoy my body and mm. the way it can move, like, or 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 the the way I can talk and present myself in different ways for different situations. Mm. And and the delight it brings people when I do do that. Because I didn't appreciate uh, the factor that surprise or, or sort of sort of an energy brings to a conversation or a, mm. a group of people and trying that out with with other things like my family or like uh, friends or like friends who are having a hard time mm. or whatever yeah you know it changes um, the dynamics it uplifts sometimes it it added some much needed um, a levity to something or, or otherwise it just allows people to feel like they can share more. It doesn't have to be always comedic or, or funny. It can just be something that opens some doors, some, some, you know, maybe some like really rusted hinges can come off of, off of their um, stupor. So like that's been huge mm. for me from from improv it's like a small example is like i i like dancing yeah i didn't do much of it before but because of improv i just feel comfortable just you know starting to to move my body yeah and i'm like you know what it's it feels good and i'm gonna do it yeah and it's you know it's like a feedback it feels good i'm gonna do it oh it feels really good i'm gonna do more um so that's been huge yeah I love that. Dancing too. I mean, it's a ton of fun and yeah. improv is a great place to kind of open that up a little bit. Yeah. When we do that, um, uh, like that one game where it's just like random classical music or just random instrumental oh, yeah. music and then you just have to like improvise something to it. Yep. I love that game. It's ridiculous, but it's just, you just have to do it. You know, yeah. you get up and you're like, <laughs> yeah, 
a, a, like a story real quick was yeah. an improv camp um, mm. after the like a, a day day's worth of, of hard work and sessions and and a lot of fun um, at night uh, Savan he put on this his favorite song which or it, it was I think after the um, sort of non improv talent show yes um he put on his favorite song and then a sort of impromptu dance party started and we were basically doing like everybody was picking a weird move mm. and then we were all sort of copying that so that yeah. was the move like they would name it like vacuum cleaner shake or something yeah, so yeah. it's like you know and that was really fun and i mm. think i do, i've never seen <laughs> that's never happened before to yeah. me Maybe people do that on the regular, but that <laughs> not in my experience. I mean, maybe in someone's experience, but yeah, I I, that was a lot of fun. You know, that's uh, and you know, I, and I and I had hurt my Achilles, and mm. I was barely walking at that Sheesh. point. But it Tough didn't stop anything. Yeah, I was like, yeah, this, this, I gotta dance. Yeah, you gotta dance. You gotta dance. You gotta dance. So, <laughs> and you dance a year ago. I, I think I would have left. Mm. I think I'd have been like, whoa, this is a bit too much. Yeah. But no, that day I was like in it, you know, yeah. in it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. That's really cool. Plus, great way to steal other people's dance moves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Save them Some for later. good ones there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. My last question for you, Sushant. Looking ahead, it's about to be 2024. You're in year two of your IFTP journey, career. Looking ahead, is there anything that you maybe any goals or things you maybe want to personally accomplish as an improviser, as a performer, whether in class, outside of IFTP, who knows? Just anything you're looking forward to on the improv horizon in the next year. I think I want to do more shows mm. and just generally get more comfortable improvising with, uh, with new people. So yeah. I, I, you know, that's a deficiency I've found in my sort of comfort level, which is uh, if I don't know the people, I'm a little bit more hesitant, a little bit more shy and not as committed. Mm. Um, and that can, you know, flow through into the performance. So yeah. I want to just do more shows and get get out of my own head a little bit more. Um and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to continue growing, sort of work on different aspects, maybe mm -hmm. learn accents. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but really that's, that's where I want to sort of focus and, and try to, um, uh, just have more fun on stage mm. while performing. Yeah. Um, and you know, so, several of my friends have, told me that i'm terrible at marketing <laughs> this stuff like i yeah. don't remember to because I, I like i don't want to use instagram and yeah. social media that much like i'll post a photo if, like once a year but that's <laughs> it. here's my yearly update yeah it's See just <laughs> uh, i'm just terrible at that yeah um like i i like always like wait i should do a story so people know what i'm doing yeah and then i never have the perfect picture yeah or whatever. I don't even yeah. know. People put videos too. I never take. Yeah. So better marketing that. and Because people want to uh, watch me. Mm. Uh, my friends want to come like support yeah. me and hang out. But you have people that. who want to come see you. Yeah. And uh, I never remember. So I'm yeah. like, I just need to be better at. Like, I'm going to steal somebody's like the little Instagram picture thing. Yeah. You can that. repost someone's story, I yes. think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to do that. There you go. I just don't remember to even put it on Instagram. So yeah. like go I won't go on Instagram for a week and then yeah. I'll be like, "Oh, that's where people look." You're like, "Oh, wait." Yeah. That's where people look. So yeah. so doing that as well. Yeah. I'm really great at promoting a show the day of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've Which had people get real useless. mad at me for yeah. that. Like yeah. real I'm like, "Hey, I'm doing a show today. Can you come?" And then my friend was like just livid. <laughs> just like hey and she was a, she she used to also do improv yeah um and she was like how come you didn't tell me like mm -hmm. i am 
physically and emotionally hurt by your decision oh. making. And I was like, I'm sorry. I yeah. will invite you the next time. Yeah. Like, that's just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. And the first, yeah. T- first person I invited the next time out of sheer abject fear yeah. was her. Good. So, yeah. but you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's nice. It's like, it feels good that people want to support me and yeah, I want to like awesome. encourage that as well. So absolutely definitely want to get better at that. So. Yeah. Well, make sure you're in, you got the chance. There you go. That's your opportunity. Hop on that Instagram, dust it off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just got to learn to, to post story to, post. ask my Gen Z cousin, like, yeah, Hey yeah, man, yeah, what yeah. do I do? He'll probably say some words that I don't yeah. understand. And then, Probably slap them because I don't understand them. But <laughs> you know, just make it make we'll sense. We'll make it happen. We'll yeah, make yeah, it happen somehow. Yeah, yeah. You'll get around to it with yeah. your cousin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All He'll right. Teach me. I respect the strategy. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, Sushant. So you ready to do some improv? All right, let's go. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we got three games we're going to be playing right. tonight. And I guarantee, uh, I bet you haven't played these games before. Okay. Because they're made up. <laughs> but, you know, it's improv, so you just go with it. Well, all games are made up at some point, so let's go. That's true. All games are made up. Wise words right there. So this first game is called Save the Company. Save the Company. Save the Company. And in this game, uh, I am your boss, and I'm going to be asking you to come up with a plan to save the company. Okay. And you'll get the details as the scene goes, and, you know, we're just going to wing it. Okay. And I'm your employee. Yeah, you're my employee. Okay. All right. What's up, boss? Now, Roger, I've uh, called you up to my office today to discuss something that no one else in this building knows about. Oh, wow. I'm so honored you trust me with this knowledge. Yeah, well, Roger, I've, uh, you know, looked at your numbers, you know, your key performance indicators. You've been a great employee here at Shampoo Corp for the yeah, I- past 10 years. When I see hair, I think of Shampoo Corp. Shampoo Corp. That's, it's, that's part of our thing, right? It's yeah. like, when you see hair, think of Shampoo Corp. See, you, yeah, you even got the finger gun right. Thank I love you. that. You're a company man. I'm through a through. company man. I will die here. <laughs> that's the kind of attitude I love, Roger. Yes, I sir. plan to do the same myself. Oh, you know, man, that's I, why I respect you so much. Yeah, I'll retire when I'm dead. You know what I mean? Yes, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean, sir. <laughs> anyway, right Roger, now. we're here to discuss something very serious. Now, you'd think shampoo, big market, right? A lot of folks who need our product. A lot of people with hair out there. A lot of them. A lot yeah. of them. Quite a Millions. Bit. Millions. I probably billions. Dare I say billions? I think. I think billions. In the recent census data, would point to billions. Maybe trillions. Tri- we can't be sure. Okay. We can't be sure. Okay. Who's to say? Look, I deal in shampoo, not population. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Census. Yeah. Be I, l- all I know, there's a lot of heads out there that need to be scrubbed. Mm-hmm. But um. Well, I don't know how to put this, but uh. The numbers are are bad. I'm, I'm talking people are not buying our, our product. And, you know, our main product that we deal with here at Shampoo Corp is our 7-in-1 uh, our shampoo solution. Oh, that's right. The yes. one that you use for your feet, hands, mm-hmm. buttocks. Yes, head. Oh, right. I shoulders, forgot the hair. Knees, toes, buttocks, pits. Nose hair. Nose hair. Yeah. That's and that's it. Sure that's that's seven. the seven okay, and yeah. one. Yeah. Seven and one. And can yeah. be also used as a degreaser as well. Oh. Yes. Didn't you know, know an about added that eighth wow, I, feature. I'm going to have to buy my mom this shampoo for yeah. sure. Well, and as you know, uh, two years ago, we decided to slim down our product line to only sell this seven and one product. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And that was a great decision, if I yeah. may so yes. say. Yes. Yeah. We were trying to condense the supply chain. Yeah. But now, you know what? People don't like. The seven in one solution. They don't. We, we don't know what it is. Year over year, since we uh, you know consolidated our product lineup, sales have dropped thirty five percent year over year. Oh no! At no fault of yours, of course. At no sir. fault of mine. Look, no I I did vote to uh, to kind of simplify the product lineup. Yeah, and that uh, was I, the I, right decision. Yes, it was. Of yeah. course, there right. were too many shampoos. You know, we just thought. Here's one shampoo, one product 
you know, that can can fix an all of your needs. Idea. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what what your hair is. Just use this. It's it's got you covered. Even yes. if hair's not really your thing, this can still clean you up. Yeah, it's like the the sudsy revolution of our time. It's, thank you. You get it, Roger. See, company man. It's yes, like sir. I just hop in the shower. There's one product for me. Yeah. Heck, put it on your teeth. It'll probably work. Yeah. But um, people aren't buying, and I. Well, odds are um, someone's gonna have to take the fall for this, and I. It's probably gonna be me. Oh no! So I, I need you to come up with an idea to help save this company, so I don't get canned. It's my goal to die in this job. Yes. But if I take the fall for this, I'm out. If you're out, then what would I do? I don't know. I I don't know. I can. I'm gonna do it. I'm yeah, gonna save this company, sir. I think you are, you. Roger. Roger, so I, you. I need a plan. Okay. I need a so, plan. So let's let's hear some ideas. Maybe you got something off the dome. <laughs> Yeah. Shampoo. Uh, <laughs> Dome. Could, yes, sir. That's a very funny joke, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, You're saying that because it's actually funny, right? It's Not very because funny. You yeah, work for I'm going to go home and laugh about it for an hour okay, when good. The, 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 you know, when the series. And maybe text someone this. you know and tell them? Yes, of course. Okay, of course. good. Already good, good. done. Already good. done. Thank you. I was texting while we were talking. All right. Well, cut the chit chat, Roger. Let's get to it. What do you, what do you got? How are you going to save this company down 35% year over year in your we sales at the 7 and 1? expand. The target audience. Expand the target yes. audience. All you right. know what has a lot of hair and all of those body parts? Chimpanzees. Oh my gosh. We need to sell our shampoo to zoos. I, have, I haven't even thought about advertising right? to them. Right, exactly. Yes. If you think about zoos, they probably go through a lot of bottles of champagne Absolutely. every year. So if we sell to zoos, then children will see the monkeys and the chimpanzees and the my apes. Oh gosh. Just shining. Their hair would be shining, their teeth, their eyeballs, everything. Yes. Buttocks. Good. Especially the red ones. That's a baboons, baboons, right? Baboons, yes. They've got the big butts. Shiny red buttocks. Shiny children red Children buttocks. would be enchanted. Oh. And there you go. Yet another target audience expanded because children, we, if, we, if we indoctrinate mm. the children mm. by the yes. way of the, the yes. Shampoo Co. Corp. Shampoo Corp. Yes. Shampoo core. That's us. That's us. Um, then they will pester their parents to mm. buy it. Whether they yes. use it or not is not our concern. Mm. Yes. It's just that's how we get to the children through the zoos. Target the children through the animals. Through the animals. That's what you're saying. Yes. Now, I've got a follow up question for you because I love the idea of targeting, Thank you, sir. targeting I guess, the primate population. Yes. Could we expand this to other animals as well? Not yes, just bipedals, but quadrupedals and. Yes, horses. <laughs> Horses, zebras, horses have hair. Zebras, tapirs, dogs, dogs, cats, yes, hamsters, mice. mice. Yeah, and those like sea monkeys are those? <laughs> do those have legs? I don't know, but it doesn't matter. We could market it to every pet, every viable pet. Blackout. <laughs> <laughs> It's not gonna get better than sea monkeys. <laughs> what are sea monkeys? I, I don't know. Are those like? Frogs, I, I genuinely don't know what they sea were, monkeys are. I remember in, in when I was in middle school, our science teacher had we had like classroom sea monkeys, but like I they left no impression on me, you know. Oh. They were they They're existed. So, they They're, were so lackluster. They, I, they may not be a, a real animal. Okay. They may be fake. Fake. Yeah. Plastic. Okay. All right. Well, well done. I think that's a great plan. You know, don't expand the product lineup. Expand the, target, expand the audience target audience outside yeah. of humanity because yeah. it's already all of you. A lot of hair to go around in the world. Hair, you know? It really doesn't is, have to be human know. hair. It's kind of a missed opportunity. Yeah. Missed opportunity. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this next game, uh, we're going to be playing. It's called Bad Phone Call. Bad Phone And uh, you and I, we're going to get a relationship uh, suggestion. Uh, it's teammates. We're teammates. Okay. We'll figure out what that means, right? And uh, at some point during the scene... I'm going to make a ringing sound. That means you're getting a bad phone call. You got to answer it. We got to find out what this bad phone call is all about. Okay. Yeah. Bad phone call is in the reception is bad or is it? Uh, the news you receive the over the is phone is, okay. is not so great. Got it. Yeah. We'll find out what that is. Okay. And again, we're teammates and uh, I'll black us out when we're done. Okay. <clears throat> <sighs> getting those hamstring stretches in, Jerry. Yes. Yes. You know what they say. If you don't stretch your hammy, you can't hit a grand slammy. 
Yeah, mm. that's uh, that's what they say in the <sighs> world of baseball. Yeah, yeah that's, world of baseball. It is baseball. That's, right. that's the yeah. world we're living in. You know, it's it's a seldom um, it's a <sighs> seldom approached topic, but hamstring stretches actually help the the uh, uh, the. Sp- a brain stem mm. it it helps it by releasing endorphins straight into your eyes mm. so it's like a high yeah it's like a, you just took e or molly and you just wow sort of yeah that's that's state. how i yeah. feel after i stretch and you know yeah. i i appreciate kind of all the uh the science you brought to our stretches in the locker room yeah yeah phil because you know toids and the organoids yeah all of them and a lot of these i'm going to be honest were words i, I wasn't familiar with before you joined the team yeah. you know we brought you in as a free agent yeah. and uh you know you've been great for the locker room man so i just thank i you. want to thank you like i feel like i've gotten smarter i you know, since you've joined the team you know my honor to be on the yeah the the cincinnati rugrats that's us man yeah junior uh, league team junior league dude i love this team you know we're all hoping one day one of us will get picked up, maybe go pro. Oh, yeah. That's the goal. And, you know. I think you could go pro, my bro. I think you could go pro, my bro. Oh. Ah, what think so, Jerry? You're what? so supportive. Phil. You should be a therapist. Phil. That, look, hey, if the whole baseball rugrats thing doesn't work out, maybe I will. Oh. And maybe you could be uh, like a doctor, like sports science or something. Oh, yeah. I could yeah, do You that. seem to know a lot about the, the muscles, right? That's, yeah, yeah. I think I said that right. Yeah. Yeah. Muscles. Yeah, muscles. Yeah. Love them. Me too, man. I've learned a lot thanks to you. You're looking it. You're looking fit. <laughs> Phil. Looking fit as a fiddle, which I don't understand because are fiddles like working out? I don't. Are they fiddlers fit? Anyway, you look fit is my point. Ring, 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 ring. Hello? Ring, ring. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh, you're. Wait. You're telling me that my hamstrings have shrunk? What? What? No, no, that can't be. That can't be right. I, I rely on my hamstrings every day. That's, that's my whole personality. They, they're going to go away. I'm going to have no hamstrings in six months. How can... Why wouldn't you give me this news in person? This is this is such a difficult day. I uh, Okay. Okay. Thanks, dad. My gosh, Phil. What am I going to do? I forgot your dad was a doctor. Yeah, he's a he's a specifically hamstrings only doctor. He's the team doctor. <laughs> the team doctor for hamstrings. And he just he just told me with uh, with my life in his hands he could have done something. He could have he could have he could have massaged said, them. He could have said something sooner. Yeah, when they were going away, now they're at ten percent. Is this is this like genetic? Is this just an, uh, a sports injury? Did, did he you clarify said, on that? He said I, he said I eat too much um, uh, uh, Milky Way, oh. and and Milky Way has a uh, uh, an arcane compound oh called my gosh. Uh, a fitziochromatic, which <gasps> which targets hamstrings. I heard of that. I heard I saw a TikTok about that. Yeah. Oh, you saw a TikTok and you yeah. didn't tell me? Well, I scrolled past it. I just thought it was boring. What? Yeah. You know I'm all about hamstrings, bro. I know. I'm sorry. You should have th- said something. Thought- you should have you you should have kept an eye out for hamstring re- hamstring and foot uh, and, and and general yeah. leg related TikTok. The signs topics. were there. You know, the signs were there. The early warning signs. I trusted you, Jerry. We could have caught this, Phil. I I feel like such an idiot. Look, you can't beat yourself up about this. I mean, you can. And and it would probably make me feel better, to be honest. Like, if you physically hurt yourself over this. But I'm not going to ask that of you. Well, I respect you too much. I mean, maybe I, you know, I have two hamstrings. Maybe there's a world where I could. Oh, my God. Donate one of my hamstrings to you, Phil. You would do that. You would do that for me, bro. I would do that for you in a heartbeat. Oh 
Like we've got God. a junior league series world baseball classic to win. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, yes, I want your hamstring. What's mine is yours. Oh my god. Blackout. <laughs> oh, devastating. I feel like we connected there though. Yeah, At the we end did. I was like Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, Your dad sucks, though. Yeah, yeah he is yeah, not he's, good at delivering bad news. He's, he's just straight up hung up on. Like me. you said, over the phone too. Like <laughs> yes. he's he's been sitting on that. He's been sitting on that probably for years. Yeah, you know he knew yeah. about the Milky Way compound. Yeah, God, you know, I gotta have a talk with. Yeah, him. and you've been eating. You've probably been eating Milky Ways Every for a while. Every day. Yeah, it's, it's, it didn't so, hurt my teeth, but my hamstrings. Your teeth are great. Yeah, thank you. Pearly whites, you know, it's the, it's the shampoo co. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> you got the good products. Yeah. So, yeah. I work at a great company. Hey, you do. You do. Oh, we're back to Roger. <laughs> Miss him. All right. We got one more game we're going to be playing. All right. Uh, and this game is called We're Not Like the Other Colts. Oh. And uh, you are a member of a cult, and you're going to try and convince me, a, a random passerby, to join. Okay. Because for some reason, you're not like the other Colts. That's all we know. That's what we're going to start with. Any questions? You good? Yeah. I'm good, yeah. I'll black us out when we're done. Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, sir, you look hey. like a chip aficionado if I've ever seen one. Yeah, you. Me? Yeah. Oh, I thought, sorry, I just, people never really notice me. Oh, oh, oh my God. Those I, people are absolutely wrong. They, yeah. you stick out. You stick out like a, like a, like a, Hot Cheeto in oh. a land of Fritos. Oh my gosh, I I love hot Cheetos with the with oh the limon. God. Yes. Um, oh yes. Those are my favorite. Is, you are going to be very excited by my group. We are Hot Cheetos Dust Anonymous. Hot Cheetos Dust Anonymous. I've never heard of that. Oh oh, it's, buddy, I am about to make your abs. I'm gonna. I'm about to make your month. You're going to go home and you're going to sleep and you're going to dream of me and and Cheeto dust. <laughs> I'm going to dream of you? Oh, my God, yes. Whoa. Okay. It's going to okay. be a good dream, I, too. Okay, so I'm going to have a good dream of, of a strange person I just met on hey, the street. Hey, hey, we're strangers at this moment in time, but soon we're not going to be. That's why. That's where we're working towards. Okay, yeah, I guess yeah. I guess that's true. Everybody starts off as a stranger. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, even my, time my we parents were, were strangers all, when yeah, I was born. Exactly. You're getting it. Yeah. yeah. We, we are we are unconditional lovers of Cheeto dust on our fingers. We don't wipe it off. No. Why? Why? Why wipe it Why? Off? Be proud. Yeah. Be the hot Cheeto in the world of Fritos. I want people to know what I'm into. You know? People will notice you. With your red, hot, sexy, sizzling fingers. <laughs> it is kind of hot, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and that's why I noticed you. Because oh. your fingers, they have the adhesive capacity of a god. Of an absolute Cheeto-eating god. And you belong <laughs> Stop. in that. Stop. Stop. Oh Stop. You are, you are, you are a rare find. too much. Just... Oh, Please, you like chips. I am. I really like chips. Yes. Well, hot Cheetos, hot Cheetos, especially because they got that, they got that magic dust on them. You know, the yes. dust that sticks to your fingers, no matter there's, what there's napkin, like it. tongue, or otherwise yeah. liquid agent you use to clean it off, they stick it's because sticky, they man. bind to the fabric of your soul. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you can, you know, you can lick it. You can. Wipe it on your pants, yeah. whatever you want, but it will always be it's there for be you, there. just like we are. Yeah. We will always be oh. there for you, licking Cheeto <gasps> dust oh. with you, and if you ever want to, even off you. All our tongues are at your disposal, disposal when you need them. Okay. Um, so this is, this is just a group of people that want to lick my fingers? No, you no, said no. off me, I'm it, sorry. The way you said it makes it weird. You but want to kill me because I like Cheetos? I, we, there's no mention, there's no di death, there's only life. Okay. We give a rebirth I to like stunted life. souls. Life is more like time yourself. for Cheetos. Yes, exactly. Like, like, people like you who are ignored by society, we build them up. 
We build you up. Mm. We build you up to be who you are meant to be. Okay. A Cheeto. Yes, there mm. we go. That is that is so our way. Good. See, so you're good. feeling good already. You, feel, yeah? you see those serotonin levels rising. Oh, they're you're spiking. In, oh, spiking. God, right you you are <laughs> you are. I want to appoint you assistant manager no. of our Cincinnati chapter. Of the, a, 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 assistant okay. manager. It's a very coveted position. Only you only get to that by genetic merit only. Genetic merit. I yeah. like. You have okay. the genes. All right. What it, I think both the genes and the genes. I, I, I've been looking to get into something. Okay. Good. This. What do I need to do? Okay. The, you just need to sign one waiver. Okay. One small, teeny okay. tiny waiver that yes. absolves um, Cheeto Dust Anonymous of any liability in case of Cheeto or Cheeto related um asphyxiation debts okay um and uh and 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 you know a small tiny little payment of 500 um and 99 dollars okay um every month okay yeah. yeah it's a small subscription it's a small price to pay yeah that's like not it's very affordable it's right? around what my car payment is so exactly yeah. yeah you don't need a car when you're feeling so good that you're walking on air it's a good Cheeto dust cloud. That's a good point. I could trade it in. You could trade it in. Use the cash. Yeah. And, keep and if you buy a double things. membership, um, you you can pay double the money and you will get an unlimited supply of, of Cheeto dust liquors. It is something you put on your tongue that doesn't dry out your saliva, but it will allow you to lick your fingers anyway. And it, it metas metastasizes the... <laughs> The, the Cheeto taste from the dust straight into your uh, tongue. That is both beyond understanding, but I don't care because I want it. You want I want it. it. Yes, you are in. You are already in. You were in the day you were born, son. Blackout. <laughs> <laughs> It's just nice to be a part of something, you know? Yeah, you it's just, just nice to be a part of I just want to lick. Some fingers, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's all we do every day. Yeah. So, that's what I'm each talking about. Each other's fingers, like, toes sometimes. Oh, so, hey, 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 save that for quit. the meeting. Hey, hey, save that for the meeting. Save that for the meeting. Hey, you got to keep that under wraps. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, I know. You right. can't just go crazy with it. Yeah, you were very convincing. Thank you. You can make a great cold outreach member if you know that's in the future. If you're day, interested, that is that is something yeah. that I strive yeah. I to think be. You get you some know, folks in. I, I want to. I want like a nice compound in Arizona. Yeah, you know, first yeah, that's what I'm Really tall about. walls, some yeah. barbed wire. Recruit some members. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. they just you know give them a, a safe haven fort, mm. Uh, mm. inescapable fort. To yeah. um, those are the best kinds. Those are the best kinds. Those are the best yeah. kinds. All right, Sushant, thank you for playing those games with me. Thank you. Those were very fun. Before we conclude tonight's episode, are there any uh, last words you want to leave us with before we go on life, on improv, on Cheeto dust, <laughs> on milk? <laughs> you know, whether it's milk or Cheeto dust or improv, mm. what I've learned from IFTP is to mm. just freaking go for it. Mm. Just go for it. You'll probably come out of it, maybe make some mistakes, but it'll be a good goddamn time. Love that. Just go for it. That's yes, go for it. Yeah. I think that's the that's the best lesson you can learn. Yeah. With anything. Like you said, whether it's Cheeto dust, milk, or doing improv, or anything else you want to try, just go for it. Just go for or it. Or finding yeah. a wireless charging bench in Croatia. Yeah. Bring that power back. Bring the power back. Energy from all seven yeah. continents. With that said, thank you so much to Sushant for joining us tonight on this episode of Improv for the Podcast. Uh this will be our last episode for 2023, and we'll see you soon in 2024. Woo. But uh, wishing you all happy holidays. We'll see you in the new year. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Improv for the podcast was created by Matt Moore and Michael Lee Evans. Edited and produced by Michael Lee Evans. And finally, presented by Improv for the People. Interested in more IFTP? You can visit us at improvforthepeople.com or on our socials, such as Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. Remember, new episodes are released weekly. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.